Saili madam, you can start now. I hope my voice is clear. Rajasthan, my voice is clear, right? Ah, uh, yes, madam. Okay, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so good morning, all of you. Welcome back to our second day revision lecture. Yesterday we had started with the revision of Max two. That is the topic number five, quadrilateral. So today is the second day of our revision. So let's begin. Before that, I want to tell you that I hope that you have learned your previous Marathi grammar lesson. So now let's begin this time. We will start. So before starting, I want to let you share my screen. And I want you all to feel that yesterday I also I informed you that whatever your notes and the examples, as the examples I have taken in extra marks and grades. So I request you all to read your mark textbook, mark textbook, notebook, and your writing pad. And note down the points which I see. Okay, so uh, be ready. Okay, so. Yesterday we have started with the quadrilateral, okay? And many basic things I have explained you, right? Uh, like what are the sides? Then what are the opposite angles? What are the adjacent angles? Then we have also discussed. Uh, I started my lecture with the meaning of the quadrilateral itself, okay? That is quad means what four and lateral means what five. So quadrilateral itself it defines that any four-sided geometrical figure, any four-sided geometrical figure. But that geometrical figure it should be a closed one. It should be a closed one. That is, if you are taking a four-line segment and it is not joining the four-line segment. Then that particular figure will not be a quadrilateral unless and until you join all your four line segments to each other. Okay. So let's see what what we have studied yesterday. So how we start here? We can understand whatever we have studied: definition, properties. So that we will just have a look. Within a short while, and then we will move to our today part. Okay. So students, yesterday we have started the lecture with our basic definition of the quadrilateral. Okay. Just now I told you that quad is for four and lateral is for five. So learn the definition from that any four-sided. Any four-sided closed geometrical figure is called a quadrilateral. Okay, I I told you that the four-sided four-line segment they should be joined to each other and they should form a closed geometrical figure. Only then then that particular geometrical figure will be called as a quadrilateral. Okay. Now this particular quadrilateral is divided into two major parts. Two major parts. The first part is parallelogram, and the second major part is the trapezium. 
Okay, so in all other types of the quadrilateral, uh, so under parallelogram, under parallelogram, we are going to study rectangle, square, rhombus. Okay, and the previous is the second major part. So all of this, which you can see on the screen, which you can uh, see on the screen, that is parallelogram, rectangle, square, rhombus. The medium. So all of these are for four-sided geometrical figures. Four-sided cross geometrical figures. And hence, this particular four-sided cross geometrical figure, like parallelogram, rectangle, square, rhombus, the medium, they come under the coordinates. Okay, they come under the coordinates. Which it is like this. I will tell you in English. I will study in English. For example, the common basic thing, common noun and the proper noun. So, if I say the name of the fruit, now fruits, it is the common noun. But under fruit, you can give different types: mango, banana, pineapple, watermelon. Okay, they are the proper noun. So, you are also with quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is the common noun. Okay. And under this coordinator, there are different types, and they are as a uh, as a corner, like parallelogram, rectangle, square, rhombus, etc. Means they are one and only one. Okay, so you are you can see the diagram. All these uh, diagrams are from all our course, and they are close. We got. All the four lines segments, they are close and they are going to each other. Okay, so they are nothing but quadrilateral. Okay, so this is the basic definition, and these are the types of the quadrilateral. We will go to the next. After the type, after the type. These are the properties. As I told you that the parallelogram is the first major part of this topic for lateral. Okay, so these are the properties which we have studied yesterday. Okay, these are the properties of parallel parallelogram which we have studied yesterday. So just have a look at it. These are the may are uh, important properties. The first one is what adjacent angle. Adjacent angle of a parallelogram are supplementary. I told you that adjacent angle is what the two line segments in which vertex is formed. In which what vertex is formed. So that particular line segment uh, it is called adjacent. Okay. So your adjacent angle. So angle is what. Between the two sides, if one angle is formed, then that is the adjacent angle. And adjacent angle of the parallelogram are supplementary. Supplementary. The meaning of the word supplementary means what? The sum, the sum of the adjacent angle is always 180. It is always what? 180. So this is the first property. Then second property. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are common. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are common. Now you know that students, I told you that parallelogram, the word parallelogram, in that word, parallel word. Okay, the first word parallel. So the opposite sides uh, of a parallelogram are parallel, and hence if they are parallel, they are what common. Okay, they are what congruent. Third property is opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so opposite angles in a parallelogram are always what congruent. For example, this I will show you. Suppose this angle, okay, this angle and this angle, they are opposite to each other. Okay, so the measure of this opposite angle is always what common. Okay, mm 
next property that we have studied diagonal of a parallelogram bisects each other. Now, diagonal, diagonal process, actually, I will mean that if I draw the opposite angle, that means if I draw a line artificially the opposite angle, then that particular line which is called as what that is. Okay, so in a quadrilateral, there are two diagonals. Okay, in a quadrilateral, there are how many? Two diagonals. So, diagonal of this quadrilateral, that is the parallelogram, they bisect each other. Okay, they are bisect each other. Now, all these four properties, this way we have seen the examples also. So, whenever you are solving the example, you need to write the region. You need to write the region. For example, opposite angle of a parallelogram are common. So if if this angle is 90 degrees, then opposite to this will also 90. So here I am getting the direct answer without any substitution or without any solving. Okay, without any substitution or without any solving. So how we got this answer? Because we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are common. So students, whenever you have solving the problem, you get the answer directly. Uh, for the angle, for the size, so directly you can write down the measure of the angle and the measure of the size. But in the practice, you need to write the reason. And the reason will be nothing but this property. Okay? The reason but nothing but this property which we have just. Okay? So we know that this property we should know it very thoroughly. Okay? So whenever the sum comes, you know, uh, many students say, oh, this is very simple sum. I can, I know this is how it is. Okay. So, but, but why this angle will be 100? So sometimes that confusion uh, may create in the mind. So to avoid such confusion or to avoid such classes, you need to know the property. Okay. Once you know the property, in the type of function, you will be able to solve. So all these properties which we have studied yesterday of a parallelogram. You have to write as the reason by solving the sum. Okay. Now, the today's topic, the today's topic, we are going to study the set for the parallel. Okay. Today's topic, that is the second subtopic, uh, subtopic I will say, that actually we have seen. Properties of the parallelogram. Okay, yesterday we have seen properties of the parallelogram. Today we are going to see test for the parallelogram. Now, test for the parallelogram is what to do. Now, for example, for example, if they give you a square rectangle number, okay, that A, B, C, D is a square. A, B, C, D is a square. Prove that. That A B C D is the parallel. Okay, do that. That A B C D is the parallel. So to do such type of question or such type of concept, you need to apply test for the parallel. Okay, you need to apply test for the parallel. Now, before starting with the test for the parallel, you know, I would like to divide the three type of angles which you have studied in the second chapter, that is the parallel. Okay, if we, you have studied in the second chapter, parallel. Okay, so three type of angles, all of you are well aware of this name, that is the triangle angle, alternate angle, and equilibrium. Okay, so we will just have a look over this. Okay, then we go to the next one. So, what are the next ones? Now, the following angle is 
they are nothing but any pair of angles, each of which on the same side of one of the two lines cut by a transversal and on the same side of the transversal. I will explain this concept. Now here you can see two lines. Okay. Now this two lines, all of you know they are five. Okay. All of you know that this two lines are what five. Otherwise, the six will be nothing but they are not intersecting lines. Parallel lines are nothing but they are not intersecting lines. And the line which bisects the parallel line, this line you can see, the line which bisects the parallel line. Parallel line can be also parallel line, be parallel line. Okay. So this line which intersects the parallel line, which is called as what line? Okay, so I know that the two words are closer to three away. So, corresponding angles. So, corresponding angles are nothing but they are on the same side of the transfer. They are on the same side of the transfer. Now, you can see that this green part I have shown. Okay, so this particular angle and this blue one. Okay, they are the and they are what corresponding angles. And these corresponding angles are always congruent. That means if this angle, this particular angle is 40 degree, for example, then this will also be 40. Okay? So corresponding angle this definition that they are on the same side of the transition. They are on the same side of the triangle. So here you can see this pair, uh, this angle and this angle. This is the first pair, okay? Below that, this one and this one, okay? So this is the second pair. Now this for the right hand side. Now same thing for the left hand side, okay? So you can see I have marked here also with the green. And the blue one. I have taken the opposite side. Okay. Green and the blue one. So they are pair of the corresponding angles. And this one green and this green see a day of pair of corresponding angles. So in these two parallel lines, when a transversal is you can get four pairs of corresponding angles. Okay. You can get four. Pairs of corresponding angles. Now, here one more concept I want to introduce you. Now you can see so this is green part, okay? That is the left hand side angle and the right hand side angle. Now, this particular angle here, they form a linear pair. They form a linear pair. Same case with the nerves, they will form a linear pair. Now, why I am explaining the because we also we are going to do this work. Okay? Same for the right side, here also they form a linear pair. Okay? Same for the left side, here also they form a linear pair. That means one, two, three, and four. Here also one, Two, three, and four. So total there are eight pairs of linear pairs. Okay, eight angles that they form the linear. Okay, so corresponding angles are nothing but they are on the same side of the transversal and they are always congruent. They are always what? Congruent. Okay. Now, how this corresponding angle is applied for the test for the parallel? This is already there in the textbook. Okay. If two lines are intersected by a transverse, okay, now we are going to A and M. These two are the parallel lines. Okay. Now, since they are not parallel, here they have only said that the two lines, okay? Now, these two lines, 
if they are intersected by transversal and the pair of corresponding angles are forming i told you that corresponding angles they form and they change by the transversal and they are forming so your condition comes that if two lines it is intersected by a transversal and the and a pair of corresponding angles are formed here then you can say that these two lines are parallel okay so we can see that is angle a and angle b if angle a and angle b are formed here, that is the measures are same okay measures are same then we can say that the lines are parallel okay two lines intersected by a transversal that means very much obvious that corresponding angles are formed okay but if the corresponding angles are congruent then we can say that the given lines are parallel okay now we are going to see clear out that angle a and angle b they are corresponding Okay, and if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines will be what? Parallel. Okay. Now this is the first test for the parallel lines, that is for the corresponding angles. Now we will go to the next one. Next type of angle which is formed by parallel parallel lines and transversals is alternate. Okay. It is what alternate angle. Now, what are alternate angles? Just have a look over the simple definition. Alternate angles are angles that are in opposite uh, relative to a transversal intersecting two lines. Okay, that means are in just opposite way by this. Now, we are going to see these two lines are parallel. Okay, and this is a transversal which intersects the two parallel lines. Now, alternate angles they are on the opposite sides of the line. The line of mass is in C. Okay, so if the angles they are in the opposite uh, side of the transversal, then that particular angle called as alternate angle. Okay, alternate alternate is what we mean. What are the two? Okay, one is ah uh, suppose if I will say one, then ah uh, alternate for this one is going to be okay. Now so here also alternate angle and angle that are in the opposite to the line, and so they are on opposite sides of the triangle. Okay, there is the same angle, they are on the same side of the triangle. Now how about alternate angle? Uh, we will see the test for the So here also the second test for the line. If two lines are intersected by the transversal and a pair of alternate angles are formed, look to the corresponding angles are also formed here, and here alternate angles are also formed here. If and only if the lines are parallel.
So measure of the angle C and measure of angle B. If it is congruent, if it is congruent, then we can say that the lines are parallel. So I told you that their measure will be the same. That is, if C is the same, and then we will also be the same. When the condition is four, when the two lines are what parallel. Okay. So if and only if two lines are parallel. That the alternate angles are opposite. Okay. Now we move to the third. That is the interior. Now we see interior plus inside. Interior plus inside. So we make an interior angle form between parallel lines. By first line, that is the exit. Now we have the first line is nothing but the transition. Okay, first line is nothing but the transition. Okay, so here you can see the two lines. They are parallel to each other, and this one here is the exit. So this is parallel. Now here you can see this angle Y. And angle X, okay, they are between the two parallel lines. Means what? They are inside the two parallel lines, okay. So they are called as what? Interior. Okay, you are also saying X angle X and angle Y. Okay, here you can see I have formed a semicircle. So this particular means what? The form of linear thread. And so this, you know that the measure of the linear thread is how much? 180. Measure of the linear thread is how much? 180. Okay? So same thing holds over if, if the two lines in the two lines are intersected by the transversal and if the interior angles are supplementary, if the interior angles are supplementary, supplementary means what? What I do mean? Then we can say that the two lines are parallel to each other. This way, in the previous case, we have seen that the corresponding angles and alternate angles, they are congruent. They are what? Congruent. But yours in the linear pair, that is also linear angle, it has to be supplementary. What if they are supplementary? If the measure is 183, then only then you can say that the given two lines they are parallel. Okay? So this is the first test for the parallel line that is of the interior angle test. Then you can see angle A and angle B. Okay. Now these two angles, you can say that they form a C shape. Okay. Or you can say that the angle which is between the two parallel lines or which is inside the two parallel lines, they are called for interior angle. And always the sum of the interior angles is supplementary. This is what supplementary. Okay? So this is for the uh, one side of the transverse. Here also, same case to know that this angle and this angle, this angle will be reduced to the other one. So they form an interior angle, and if they are measured in why is it easy? Then we can say that the line L is parallel to the angle. Okay? So this three type of angles are formed by two parallel lines, intersected by the transversal, for the one in the corresponding angle, and the corresponding angles are congruent, then we can say that the given lines are parallel to the Okay, the same type of angle which is formed by the parallel line is also a rectangle. 
Okay, now we take it for test. Do it. Understand the theory. Okay, because once you understand, it will be easier to solve or to improve in this type of question. We are going to take one of the questions based on this. Okay, so first let us understand what are the questions. So first one is what? Keep the opposite and now we are going to see the parallelism. P, Q, R, S. So there are only a few names in the parallelism. So just try to see. So this quadrilateral P, Q, R, S. This is the parallelism. So if the opposite angles of congruence, any point, if the opposite angles of congruence, okay, here will be angle S and angle Q. So if angle S is congruent to angle Q, okay, angle Q is congruent to angle R. So if opposite angles are congruent, then you can say that that given point is so, okay, so here I can say that P, Q, R, S, this is the parallelism. Like, because angle S is common to angle Q, and angle Q is common to angle R. Okay, so this is the first test of the parallelism. That is, opposite angle of any quadrilateral, the opposite angle of any quadrilateral are common to Okay, then Directly, you can write that that particular part is a particular part. Okay. Next to the second one. If opposite sides, if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are common, then the quadrilateral is a quadrilateral. This way, yesterday, they did, uh, as I told you, the very first time I told you, that yesterday we have seen what are opposite sides, what are adjacent sides, what are vertical sides, how to do it, what are the other So all these minor things are there, but we are clear to the first concept that the statement of any test or any group will be easier for you to understand. Okay? So you are in the opposite sides of the quadrilateral are strong in it. Then the polylateral is the parallel. So you can see as polylateral A, B, C. Okay? Your A, B, C, polylateral A, B, C, I have marked the similar sign. That is side A, B and side B, C. Okay? So if side A, B and side B, C, they are parallel to each other. Okay? So if this side, opposite side, are common, are same, then we can say that the given quadrilateral is for parallel. Same way for the other side, and the side AB and side BC. Okay? So if the middle of the side AB and the middle of the side BC is same or equal or congruent, then we can say that the given quadrilateral is for parallel. Okay, so this is the second test for the final one. First test is for upper angle and complex. Then the quadrilateral will be final one. Second is for upper side of the quadrilateral are complex. Then the quadrilateral will be final Let's go to the third one. Third one is what? If the diagonals of the quadrilateral bisect each other. I told you that diagonals they are nothing but the line joining the opposite angle. Okay? So here we will see in this quadrilateral C, Q, R, S. You can see the diagonal that is the P, R and the Q. Okay? So this two diagonals, P, R and S, Q, they intersect at point N. They intersect at point N. And in the quadrilateral, there are only two diagonals. Okay. In any quadrilateral, there are only two diagonals. Okay. So, if the diagonal of a quadrilateral bisects 
as well as they are hungry, then we can say that the body has been in a pattern. Okay, so here in the last point, I have merged this point together, that is, if the opposite sides of the body lines are handled, I'm complaining that the body lines are in a pattern. Okay, so if the pair of opposite sides, here I will mark this side, but if L X is parallel to A N, and the same side is B C R complement also, then only then we can say that the polynomial which is given to you is a pattern. Okay, so all these four steps will be applicable when you solve the sum. When you solve the sum. Okay, so since I know that uh, all the four steps are clear. First one is what? Opposite angles of a polynomial are wrong. So if opposite angles are wrong, then the polynomial is right. Second one is that if opposite sides are complement, then the polynomial is the pattern. First one, opposite angles, second one, opposite. Third one is what? Diagonal of a polynomial must be equal to diagonal of a polynomial. If it must be equal, then that will be the polynomial is the pattern. And the fourth one, and the last one, that is if the opposite sides are parallel. And at the same time, if they are common, then we can say that the given polynomial, <coughs> the given polynomial is a parallel. So all these four tests will be used when we solve the sum for giving the reason. For giving the reason. Okay. So let us see example in which. How we can apply this for this is the solution. If you want to study the algebra, you need to understand what is the process for the parallel. For test for the parallel, you need to understand what angles are formed by parallel. Okay? So all these concepts they are connected to each other. They are what? Connected to each So, to study a particular topic, you should understand what different concepts are related to that topic. And that all concepts should be clear only when whatever topic you are studying, whatever topic you are studying, you should be well understood. Okay? Only just Learning by heart, like other subjects, that will not be possible in math. Okay, that will not be possible in math. Math is nothing but the understanding and application. Okay, once you understand and you know how to apply, then math will be easy. And I am sure that this is. Not no topic, not a single topic in math is difficult until and until you understand and practice it. Okay? So and I explained the test for the parallel one. But what things are required to understand this test? That first should be clear. Only then we can go to the research. Okay? So let us see the example. And here I have taken the example from the practice test by computing itself. Okay, you can see in your textbook. Okay, uh, the first question. Now, in practice test by computing says there are five questions. Okay, there are five questions. And question number three, our question number five has been reduced from your paper. Since currently for this year, this few questions will not be asked for this exam only for this year. So now let us see the first question. 
sides of a banana are tangent. Okay. Now, AP is parallel. Now, why AP is parallel? Because point C and point Q, they are the midpoint. They are what midpoint of side AB and side AB. Okay. So midpoint is what? A dash B dash B that is equal to length A P will be equal to B. Okay. A B will be equal to what? C. So A dash B dash B and C dash B dash B. So here let us mark the two ones. What is the equation one? Second step is what? AB is parallel to C. Why don't they are what? Uh, they are right. uh, AB is parallel to B. So I told you that if the sides are parallel to parallel, then they will be congruent. So you will see in the second step parameter that AB is parallel to C. So if they are parallel, then they will be congruent, but they will be what? Equal. So we can say that AB equal to B. Okay, A B is equal to B. Now what we will do is since C and Q are the midpoint, we will multiply half of both the sides of B. That is A B equals to Q. We will multiply half on uh, A B and get to the Q. Now you can see half of A B Half of AB is what AB, right? Half of AB is what AB. Why? Because C is the midpoint. Okay. Similarly, half of CB, okay, half of CB will be what CQ. Why? Because C is the midpoint. Now, students, your what I have taken AB and not the midpoint, and here also CQ and not the midpoint. Why only this part happens? Actually, AP and BP both are same. But what we want to prove APQQ, this particular item we want to prove is the parallel So for that, I have taken this side, that is the AP. Half of AP is A. Also, half of AB is BP. But you know that both of BP and BP. We are interested in the energy and Okay, so that's why I have taken that is AP is equal to C. Okay, AP is equal to C. So from first and third, so here are the results. The C and Q are the middle point of the side. This side, side AB and side BP is the Okay, now here you can see in quadrilateral A, P, Q. Okay, and in this quadrilateral, this A, P is parallel to C, Q. A, P is parallel to C, Q. Why? Because A dash B dash B is the same as A dash B. Okay, at the same time, A, P. Is congruent to C Q. If this is parallel, then it has to be congruent. If this is parallel, then it has to be what is congruent. That is, after this side of a parabola are always congruent. Are always what is congruent? Okay. So if if opposite sides are parallel and if opposite sides are congruent, then we can say that the parabola is the opposite sides of the quadrilateral are parallel and congruent, then the given quadrilateral will be what? Parallel. Okay? So see, we have used the test of the quadrilateral while following this. So here we have proved that 
the sides are hybrid and the legs of the sides are founded. Okay, so if the opposite sides are hybrid and the opposite sides are founded, then we can say that the visual organization is the parallel graph. So you know, we can write the visual that is the test for parallel graph. Here we can write the whole statement that is if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and concave, then the quadrilateral is a parallel graph. If you write the whole statement, it is better than this. And if you write test for a parallel graph, then also it is other. Okay, but writing the detail is very important. Okay, but writing the details is very, very important. Okay, so wherever you are using a proper any uh, a copyright or any formula, you need to write the details. See, here I have multiplied half of the other side. So, here the reason is what simply multiplying both the sides by half. Okay, multiplying both the sides by half. So everywhere, wherever possible, you should write the reason for that particular step. Okay, so this is how you present your answer. Ask the master what is the idea, what the delivery, the solution, writing the reason for the step wherever required. Okay, we'll see one more example. Okay, the next example that is using the opposite angle step for parallel ground. Using the opposite angle step for parallel ground, prove that every rectangle is a parallel ground. Now, here they have specified, here they have specified what particular property or what particular test you have to use. Okay, so you have to use only this property and prove that the rectangle is the pattern. Now, rectangle, just so that they have seen. Rectangle, what are the properties of the rectangle? Okay, students, so uh, I told you that whenever you want to study a topic, the concept which is related to that topic is to be clear for you. Okay, so rectangle, basically, you have seen that the opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles, or the opposite sides are common, and all the angles are each angle. In a rectangle is negative. Okay, so this uh, property is we have studied yesterday. Okay, so now this property along with the opposite angle test. Now, opposite angle test is what? See, first test for parallel is not that we have studied. If the opposite angle of the quadrilateral are positive, that the quadrilateral is the pattern. Okay, so this only this particular test you have to use and you have to prove that the prove that every rectangle is the pattern. Okay, so let us see how we can use that. So here they are given that prove that every rectangle. So you can take the rectangle with the name as you wish. Okay. I have taken the rectangle that is the A, B, C, D. Okay. This is the rectangle. And you know that the rectangle each angle is what? And each angle is the rectangle. Okay. So here, what is given? No, uh, I will tell you that the uh, diagram is what? Regulating is what? Given. Okay, so what is the meaning of the question? That the quadrilateral is the rectangle. Okay, that is, it is 
So, okay, so in this way, if you understand the different types of the particles, then you will be able to solve any type of question in the area. No matter whether it is the answer textbook or it is not the answer If the concept is clear, if the question is clear or your topic is clear, then you can answer any question. Okay, so I hope that whatever today we have learned and the test for the paradigm and the topic related for the test for the paradigm is understood by you. Then we meet on Monday for the first religion lecture. That means we'll see the next topic or the sub topic from the organization. Okay, and I hope that uh, you have wrote down all your points which I am explained. Okay. Okay, so uh, I will tell you how to talk all the points. Also, note down the sum. So, next time, when we meet on Monday, we will start with another topic, a topic from the class. Okay? Hello. Hello. Yes, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, students.